General Mills presents June and Stu Irwin in Trouble with Father. Boxer Ben fights hard and fair, so in the ring you kid beware. He's dynamite because he knows he's got no power from Cheerios. He's got go power. There he goes. He's feeling his Cheerios. 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 Yes, Cheerios. The cereal that's shaped like a little letter O. No other cereal is like Cheerios. The only ready-to-eat cereal with this wonderful toasted oat flavor. A breakfast of Cheerios with milk, fruit, and buttered toast is all you need to give you go power. That's because Cheerios is made from energy-packed oats made to give you the vitamins and minerals you need for healthy nerves, good red blood, strong teeth and bones. So give the whole family Go Power from Cheerios, the oat cereal that needs no cooking. Then you'll hear people say, He's feeling his Cheerios. <laughs> Seventy-five, eighty, eighty-five, ninety, ninety-five, ninety-six, ninety-seven, ninety-eight cents. The price agreed upon was a dollar, Jackie. You only paid ninety-eight cents for the book, didn't you? Why should I give you a profit? Very well, Jackie. We won't haggle over two cents. Give me the money and here's the book. Let me take a look first. No cash, no secrets. Are you sure that book will make me a mind reader? Absolutely positive. The secrets of hypnotism, telepathy, and mind reading. All in ten easy lessons. I'll be an honest to goodness mind reader? Definitely. With your marvelous woman's instinct, and this rare book will make an unbeatable combination. Here's your money. I'd like to speak to Mr. Irwin, please. I'm sorry, but he isn't in. I'm Mrs. Irwin. Oh, well, then what I have to say concerns you also, Mrs. Irwin. No, I'm here in reference to certain property you own on the south side of town. I represent certain principals who wish to purchase it. Well, there must be some mistake. The only property we own is this house. Oh, I'm certain there can be no mistake. Why, uh, yes, here it is. Lot 646C in parcel 2740 in tract 806 located northeast of Spruce Street and section F in the township of the city. It's registered in the name of Mr. and Mrs. Stuart Irwin. Well, I don't know where you got this information, Mr. Um... Smith is the name. I'm sorry, Mr. Smith, but we own no such property. Hmm. Well, uh, possibly Mr. Irwin will know something about it. Will you have him call me, please? I'll be glad to. Thank you, Mrs. Irwin. Goodbye. Goodbye. Hello? Irene? This is Joyce. I'm fine. How are you? I wanted to ask you about the dance Saturday night. Are you going? Who's taking you? Jack? Oh, that's swell. Well, I'll be seeing you later. Bye. Hello, Emily. This is Joyce. I uh, wanted to talk to you about the dance Saturday night. Are you going? You are? Who's taking you? Bob? Oh, he's nice. Well, I'll see you there. Bye. Joyce. I'm busy, Jackie. It'll only take a minute. What do you want? Mental telepathy. Huh? Sure, I'm a regular mind reader. Jackie, I'm busy. Drexel hasn't asked me to the dance Saturday, and I have to find out if he's asked anybody else. I haven't got time for anything like that. Aw, oh, Joyce, come on. Jackie, there is no such thing as mind reading. There isn't? I'll show you. See, I've got all these slips numbers from one to five. I bet I can make you pick the one I'm concentrating on. Go ahead, concentrate. I'm concentrating. I'm concentrating. I want you to pick number four. What do I do now? Look at it. You'll see it's number four. It's number three. 
Oh, gosh, I guess maybe I better study that book some more. You better throw that book away and stop wasting your time on such stupid things. Hello. <laughs> Hello, dear. Pop, have I got something to show you. What? Mental telepathy. Mental telepathy. Oh, Jackie, there's no such thing. There is so. <laughs> I've got a book and it shows you how to do everything. That's all we've been hearing all day. Maybe your book can tell me how to make out a family budget that'll come out even at the end of the month, huh? Dad, you're home. Well, don't I usually come home? Dad, did you see Drexel today? I mean, did you talk to him or anything? Yes, I did, and I talked to him. Why? Well, did he tell you who he was taking to the dance Saturday night? No, he didn't. Why should he tell me that? Why don't you ask Jackie? She's the mind reader in the family. Oh, Mother, that isn't very funny. I don't think it is either. I am a mind reader. This might seem too simple, but if you want to know who Drexel's going to take to the dance, why don't you ask him? I should let him know I care? Oh, Dad, I wouldn't think of it. <laughs> why is it you never know the right thing to say to a 16-year-old? I guess we'd know the right thing to say if we could remember we were 16 ourselves once. Mm -hmm. All I can think of right now is our bank account. Which isn't. Stu, a funny thing happened today. A man came by and wanted to buy a piece of property from us. If I had a piece of property, I'd certainly sell it. He was quite sure of himself. He seemed to think we really owned one. He mentioned the tract, the lot number, everything. Ah, it's some new gag. He probably wants to sell you one. Oh, I don't think so. Anyway, he said he wanted to talk to you about it. His card is on the telephone table. I'll throw it away and forget it. <laughs> I was just thinking. About what? About that lot you wanted to buy. You huh? remember, dear. It was when we were first married. You were so sure that property on the other side of town was going to be a good investment. We drove out there. You wanted me to see it. <laughs> what property? A swamp. And you were furious with me for not liking it. Where did you say the man's card is? Well, on the telephone table. What's the matter? I have a little secret for you, darling. You know the reason why I was furious you didn't like it? No. Well, now I can tell you. I was furious because I'd already bought it. You couldn't. Oh, yes, I could have. I paid $250 for it. I knew that property would be worth a lot of money someday. Where are you going? Hmm, call the man who wants to buy it. You're joking. You're not serious. Oh, I am serious. That money can come in mighty handy. We can pay the tax bill with it. June! June! Yes, dear? That man's card. Where is it? Well, it was right there. I'm sure well, it's I It's not there now. I'm positive. He gave it to me and I put it right there. And it's gone. Do you remember his name? No. Wait a minute. It was a Mr. Smith. Oh, fine. That makes it easy. Smith, what a name to have. There must be a million of them in town. Oh, this is awful. Daddy! They're not now, honey. We're busy. Go on. We'll call every one of them. I don't care if there are two million. Oh, all right. What's the first one? A. Smith. A. Smith? That's the first one. Oh, oh, all right. What is it? Atwell, 4443. Atwell. Sleepy. Sleepy. Your eyes are closing. You cannot help yourself. Now you are sleepy. I am sleeping. Are you sure? I am positive. Double positive? Absolutely positive, Jackie. Ow! So you were sleeping, huh? You were making believe that's what you were doing. I guess I was simulating sleep, Jackie. You know what you are, Harold Lambert. You're a jip. That's what you are. You jip me out of 98 cents. This book can't make anybody a mind reader. Wait a minute, Jackie. Wait a minute. I'm waiting for my 98 cents back. I haven't got it. What? I was working on the supposition of Barnum's old axiom. A sucker is born every minute. So now I'm a sucker. I'd like to give you the money. Only I spent it. Four chocolate sodas and a bag of gumdrops. I'll never forgive you for this, Harold. Never. I told the whole family I could mind read. Now they're laughing at me. Jackie? Go away. I give you four weeks allowance for this book. Mom will want to know where every penny goes. Parents can sometimes be very trying. Go away. I never want to see you again. I'm sorry, Jackie. But maybe there is one way out of your dilemma. No. Huh? Dilemma. A situation involving choice between equally unsatisfactory alternatives. Well, whatever it means, you sure put me on a spot. I gotta make them believe I'm a mind reader. I think I can help you. I've got a microphone and a little radio. What's that got to do with me? But you don't understand. I can hook up the microphone to the radio and put the microphone any place and hear what's happening. 
You mean you can plant something in a room or any place and we can hear without being seen? Elementary, Jackie, you've got my personal guarantee. Well, in that case, Palsy Walsy, you're forgiven. Where are we going? To get that microphone of yours. We've got to do a little mind reading. Zachary Smith, this is Stu Irwin. Did you call at my house this afternoon? No. The 186th, no. Well, there's still one more. Well, what is it? Zenith Smith. Zenith Mutual. Dad! Mm -hmm. Dad, did Drexel call? Well, the phone's been busy for quite a while, Joyce. Well, how could he call if the phone's been busy? I don't know. Oh, I'll never know if he's going to take me Saturday night. There's still a week till Saturday, Joyce. He'll have plenty of time to ask you. A girl has to know in advance, Mother. She simply must. Oh. Come on, we've got to do some mind reading over at Drexel's house. Joyce is worried about her date. I know. I know how to get him. How? Smith must be a real estate agent. He must be. Oh. We'll call every agency in town. <laughs> no. Here's the classified section. No, Joe, no. <laughs> she loves me. She loves me not. She loves me. She loves me. Hi, Drexel. Oh, hi, Randy. She loves me. She loves me not. She loves me. She loves me not. Who? Who loves you? How should I know? You know, I wish somebody'd love me. Somebody will. It takes all kinds of women to make a world. Will it work? Sure, when I get the cord in. Hey, who are you taking to dance Saturday? Joyce Irwin. Joyce? Uh... Oh, what a beauty. You ask her yet? Nope. Well, if you're going to take her to dance, how come you haven't asked her before? No sense to it. Well, you sure got a lot of nerve. You know, when, when I want to take a girl to dance, I'll ask her a oh, month ahead of time, so... <laughs> she doesn't want to go, I can ask her a couple dozen more. Well, that's because you don't understand women, son. You got to keep them guessing right up to the last minute. No kidding? Sure. Women are peculiar people. Once they feel they can depend on you, then they're not interested anymore. So, you've got to be completely undependable. Yeah, I guess so. When are you going to ask her? Tonight. I'll call her up at seven and act as if it just occurred to me to ask her out. And casual, see. Very, very casual. As if it didn't mean much to me one way or the other. Yeah, but what if she doesn't want to go with you? I'll kill myself. Did you get the desired information? And how? Come on, Harold, let's go. Where to? Over to the Parsons' house. I'll probably have to do some mind reading over there. We'll return to the Irwins in just a moment. Daddy! Shh! Gee, Mom was counting on that jello cake for Johnny's scout meeting tomorrow. Okay, Daddy. It's so easy to make a cake with Betty Crocker cake mix. I'll make her another one. White cake, devil's food, yellow cake. It's a good thing her mom's modern. I'm Betty Crocker. With my yellow cake mix, all you do is add water and a couple of fresh eggs. The other ingredients are in the package. Same fine things you'd use right in your own home. You'll get a perfect cake just like this, or write General Mills, Minneapolis, Minnesota, and they'll send your money back. A high cake, a light cake, a better tasting cake. And don't think it isn't. That's why Betty Crocker herself says. I guarantee a perfect cake every time you bake, cake after cake after cake. And now, back to the Irwins. Hello, Swenson Real Estate Agency. Do you happen to have a Mr. Smith working there? No? Well, look, you wouldn't know if anyone was interested in buying some property on the south side. All right, all right. Goodbye. Any luck, dear? No, but I only have 40 more real estate agencies to go. While you're at it, why don't you ask if anyone's interested in buying that property? I have. The last one asked me if I wanted to sell the fishing rights. I have to find that Smith. Ooh.
We're going over to the air rinse tonight. What shall I wear? Wear the green one. Why, Emery Parsons, I don't even have a green dress. Well, I wear anything. Well, every time I wear my red dress, June wears her lavender dress. I'm afraid to sit next to her. They clash so. Oh, horrible. Oh, you, you men, you simply don't understand. Oh, I know. I'll wear the gray one. That goes with anything. Yeah, wear the gray one. <laughs> Emery, there's a gentleman here to see you. Yeah. If you'll excuse me, I have several things to do. Smith, you shouldn't be seen here. I told you to call me if you wanted anything. Yes, yes, I know, but I wanted to tell you what was happening about the properties you wanted me to buy. But why didn't you telephone me then? I don't want anybody to know I'm connected with this deal. Did Irwin see you come in? No, of course not. I'm sure of that. Now, here's what we've got. We have Edwards parcels, Harris's, Williams, Browns, and the Hoff. What, what about, what about Irwin? Well, now that's a funny thing. You know, I saw Mrs. Irwin, and she says they don't even own a lot there. Oh, of course they do. Stu bought that land years ago. Well, I told her that, but, uh, however, I left my card with her and asked her to have him call me up. Didn't he? Not a peep. Hey, do you suppose he's found out what we want the property for? No, no, nobody knows but us. Then, uh... I'll give him another call. No, no, don't do that. I, I don't want to appear anxious. Uh, I'm willing to give him 100% profit, but I don't want him to hold me up. Okay, we'll wait then. Oh, uh, I'm still at the Adams Hotel. Yeah. When you want. Yeah, yeah. Okay. Goodbye. Goodbye. Are you sure you haven't a Smith working there? All right, thank you very much. Goodbye. Anything yet, darling? With all the Smiths in town, not one works in a real estate office. Oh, he'll probably call again. Yeah. Come on, dear. The Parsons are coming over. Fix up a little. Oh, all right. All right. I can't understand it. Smith, Smith, Smith. Stu? Hmm? What dress shall I wear? I don't know. Wear the blue one. I haven't a blue one. Huh? And every time I wear my lavender dress, she wears her red one. Yeah. Don't worry, Mom. She's not going to wear that one tonight. She's going to wear her gray dress. Oh, that's fine. Then I can wear almost anything. How do you know what she's going to wear? I was concentrating and it came to me. <laughs> of all the ridiculous. Come on, dear, let's get dressed. Yes. Jackie! Well, yes, Joyce? Jackie, did Drexel call yet? No, he won't call until 7 o'clock. Oh, that's wonderful. Wait a minute. What makes you so sure he's going to call at 7 o'clock? Telepathy. I concentrated on Drexel for a while and it came to me. Right out of the air. Right out of the air. Of all the silly little children with crazy ideas. Crazy, am I? You'll see. He's going to call and ask you to the dance. I heard. I mean, it's telepathy. That's what it is. Seven o'clock, huh? Why, it's seven o'clock this minute. You and your telepathy. Hello? Drexel? Why, yes, I, I'd love to go to the dance with you, Drexel. G goodbye. Jackie, tell me, how did you know? I told you. Telepathy. Really, Jackie, really? I know lots of things. You do? What else do you know? That, my dear sister, is a professional secret. <laughs> I still don't see why you don't believe I can read minds. I did tell you that Mrs. Parsons was going to wear her gray dress. And I did tell Joyce that Drexel would call at 7. You were just guessing, that's all. Come on, let's play bridge. But yeah. some people are clairvoyant, you know. Oh, that's silly. That's a scientific impossibility. Then test me. I'll prove to you that I can mind read. <laughs> all right, Jackie, you go out of the room. And while you're gone, we'll pick an object. Then you can come back and tell us what we picked. That'll be a sin. <laughs> oh, all the ridiculous things I ever heard of. Nobody can do that. Well, come on, let's get it over with. What will we pick? Emery's tie. Yeah, she'll probably pick the piano. Then we can play bridge. All right. Emery's tie. Jackie! Hi, Mother! Well, what did we pick? <laughs> you picked... Cute. You picked something... 
soft and silky. I see it now. You picked... You picked... You picked Mr. Parsons' tie. No, impossible. It's amazing. Well, she's actually gifted. I still don't believe it. Nobody can do that. No. Go on, Jackie. Get out of the room. We'll pick something else. Pick anything you want, Pa. Yeah. Oh, it must be some kind of a trick. Well, I don't know. Some people do have those powers. We'll pick something real hard this time. Uh, well, let, if she can read minds, let's have her do something. Yeah. Uh, here, let her take this handkerchief out of my pocket and give it to you, Stu. All right. That should prove it, one way or the other. What happened? Guess it blew it, too. Jackie, you can come in now. This time, you're supposed to do something. I'm concentrating. I'm concentrating. It's coming to me. Is that what you wanted me to do? Yes, dear, that's it. It's simply fantastic. Oh, it's, it's impossible. It's a miracle. I want to see you do it once more. Uh, I, I can't. What's the matter, Jackie? I guess I'm all concentrated out. Oh, dear. I guess you'd better go to bed and get some sleep. Yeah, yeah I think maybe I'd better, Mom. Good night, everybody. Good night, Good night Jackie. Jackie. Well, that sounds fishy. Mind reading. I still can't believe she can you do it. You saw her, didn't you? I'm going to call a psychiatrist. We killed him, Harold. I better go home. My mother might be concerned about my whereabouts. Mind reading, huh? Good night, Mr. Irwin. Well? It was just a joke, Pop. You were being dishonest. I'm sorry, Dad. <laughs> well, if you promise not to do it again, we'll forget it. Gee, Pop, you're super. <laughs> I wish you could do some mind reading for me. Hmm? I wish you could tell me where I could find that fellow that wants to buy my property. I know who wants to buy it. Mr. Hmm? Parsons. No, oh, no, it's not. It's a man named Smith. Mr. Smith is the one Mr. Parsons is using to buy the property, but it's really Mr. Parsons that wants to buy it. Oh, no, you must be wrong, Jackie. Emery wouldn't do a thing like that. I was listening when they were talking about it. Mr. Parsons sure wants that property bad. Oh, he does, huh? Well, if he wants to play like that, we can too. Stu, come on, we're waiting for you. I'm coming. You know where this Smith is? Sure, at the Adams Hotel. Good, we'll call him the first thing in the morning. Oh, we better keep this to ourselves, right? That's just what I was thinking. Well, Mr. Irwin, I'm certainly glad you called me. I was beginning to think you were not interested in selling your property. Mm, to be frank, I'm very interested, Mr. Smith. Good. Well, then... I'm prepared to make you an offer of a 50% profit. Mm -hmm. In other words, $375. Well, I never do business without expert advice. You don't mind if I bring a friend over, do you? Oh, certainly not. My dealings are always above board and honest. And pardon me just a moment. Uh, sit down, Mr. Smith. Thank you. Fine, go get Mr. Parsons and bring him right over. And remember, you're to sit on the couch. Don't say anything, just look smart. I'm way ahead of you. I'm sorry to keep you waiting like this, but I never do any business without this particular friend. Oh, by the way, what did you want the property for? Oh, just for speculative purposes, oh, Mr. Irwin. You want me to see me, Sue? Uh, yes, Emery, this is Mr. Smith. Uh, Mr. Smith, this is Mr. Parsons. How do you do? Uh, how do you do? How do you do, Mr. Smith? Um, sit down. Sit down, Emery. Oh, Jackie. Yeah, sit thanks. Right over there. Now, Emery, uh, Mr. Smith here has been wanting to buy my piece of property on the south side. He's offered me $375 for it. What do you think? Uh, huh? Oh, uh, uh Jackie, <laughs> why don't you go out and play somewhere, huh? <laughs> I like it here. Oh, well, there's nothing we have to keep from Jackie, is there, Emery? It's just a little business deal. Now, what do you think of that price? $375 with old blocks. That's a good price. It's a profit. Well, I don't know. I don't think it's enough. 
Well, for a quick deal, Mr. Irwin, I'm prepared to offer you five hundred dollars. Jackie, uh, will, you, will you go out and get me a match, honey? <laughs> I'm right in front of you, Mr. Parsons. Yeah, never mind. I don't want to smoke. Five hundred dollars doesn't seem enough for a good piece of property. A, a good piece of property? <laughs> it's all swampland. Anybody that buys it will have to fill it in. Five hundred dollars is a lot of money. Yes, I guess you're right, but... Uh... Well, I'll tell you what, Mr. Irwin. I'll make you my last and absolutely final offer, one thousand dollars. One... One thousand dollars? Now you're talking money. Jackie, that almost seems like too much, doesn't it? I'll be darned, this is the first time in my life I've ever done business with anybody with a mind reader in the house. Oh, Emery, you're not doing business. It's Mr. Smith here. He's the one that wants to buy the property. Isn't that right, Jackie? Oh, all right, Stu. I, I was going to tell you anyway, Smith is buying the property for the bank. Oh? There's an airline coming into town and they're building an airport. And the south side's the only place they could find for it. They're going to fill it in. Yes. Oh. And a thousand dollars is three times as much as we paid anybody else. Yeah. Is that so? Well, then I guess I'll have to accept it. And I want to thank you, Emery, for all the good advice. I didn't give you any advice. thousand huh? dollars. That's highway robbery. And in the future, remember this. When we're doing business together, no mind readers, you understand? All right. Drop into the bank in the morning and sign the papers. I'll have your money ready for you. Goodbye, Emery. Uh, good day, Mr. Smith. Oh, good day, Mr. Irwin. <laughs> How do we do, Pop? Fine. <laughs> Just fine. <laughs> oh, got the juice in <laughs> Hello, I'm Betty Crocker. I guess every family has its own kind of problems, but certainly baking a cake doesn't have to be one of them. You don't have to be an expert when you use my cake mix. Take my newest flavor, Honey Spice. The men really go for it. And so will your bridge club. A perfect cake. You be the judge. Or write General Mills, Minneapolis, Minnesota, and get your money back. Anybody can make a cake like that, even your youngsters. Just add water and two of your own fresh eggs. Those fresh eggs keep it moist and tender to the last crumb. Not that you'll ever have any crumbs left over. A Betty Crocker cake mix cake is high, light, better tasting. You know, even your very first cake will be perfect with my Betty Crocker cake mix. As a matter of fact, that's why I can safely say I guarantee a perfect cake every time you bake, cake after cake after cake. That's right. You do get a perfect cake with Betty Crocker cake mix. And if you don't have time to bother with fancy icings, try this quick and easy topping. Spread a blanket of whipped cream over Betty Crocker gingerbread. Then spoon drain fruit cocktail over the top. Or make a shortcake of whipped cream and frozen or fresh berries, vanilla ice cream and chocolate sauce. Looks wonderful, tastes wonderful. Why not bake your own perfect cake, Betty Crocker perfect, right now? Be with us again next week when General Mills presents June and Stu Irwin in trouble with father. He's got go power. There he goes. He's feeling his Cheerios. Cheerios. Yes, Cheerios. The only ready-to-eat cereal with this wonderful toasted oat flavor. Cheerios is made from energy-packed oats, made to give you vitamins and minerals you need for healthy nerves, good red blood, sound teeth and bones. Get your Go Power from a Cheerios breakfast tomorrow. He's feeling his Cheerios. General Mills presents June and Stu Irwin in Trouble with Father. Boxer Ben fights hard and fair So in the ring you kids beware He's dynamite because he knows 
He's got gold power from Cheerios. He's got gold power. There he goes. He's stealing his Cheerios. 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 Yes, Cheerios. The cereal that's shaped like a little letter O. No other cereal is like Cheerios. The only ready-to-eat cereal with this wonderful toasted oat flavor. A breakfast of Cheerios with milk, fruit, and buttered toast is all you need to give you go power. That's because Cheerios is made from energy-packed oats, made to give you the vitamins and minerals you need for healthy nerves, good red blood, strong teeth, and bones. So give the whole family go power from Cheerios, the oat cereal that needs no cooking. Then you'll hear people say, He's feeling his Cheerios. The price agreed upon was a dollar, Jackie. You only paid 98 cents for the book, didn't you? Why should I give you a profit? Very well, Jackie. We won't haggle over two cents. Give me the money and here's the book. Let me take a look first. No cash, no secrets. Are you sure that book will make me a mind reader? Absolutely positive. The secrets of hypnotism, telepathy, and mind reading, all in ten easy lessons. I'll be an honest-to-goodness mind reader? Definitely. With your marvelous woman's instinct, and this rare book will make an unbeatable combination. Here's your money. I'd like to speak to Mr. Irwin, please. I'm sorry, but he isn't in. I'm Mrs. Irwin. Oh, well, then what I have to say concerns you also, Mrs. Irwin. No, I'm here in reference to certain property you own on the south side of town. I represent certain principals who wish to purchase it. Well, there must be some mistake. The only property we own is this house. Oh, I'm certain there can be no mistake. Why, uh, yes, here it is. Lot 646C in parcel 2740 in tract 806, located northeast of Spruce Street and section F in the township of a city. It's registered in the name of Mr. and Mrs. Stuart Irwin. Well, I don't know 